Mount Makiling is a dormant volcano in the province of Batangas and Laguna in the Philippines. If you've gone there before, you know it has different places which you can visit, like the flat rocks, mud springs, and the tree peaks. Following the Maria Makiling Trail, which is divided into 30 checkpoints or stations, today we'll be hiking up to the Aguila Base, which is found on Station 11. In this adventure, I'm joined by my colleagues at work. Just a disclaimer, this is neither a company-sponsored activity, nor were we required to do this. We just got together and thought that this might be fun. Might be fun. Now going to this hike, I was expecting to see unique plants or animals, but I'm not actually expecting much considering the fact that the trail that we'll be walking on is a paved road. In my opinion, you'll normally see the uniqueness of nature when you venture beyond the human touch. But I'm open to surprises. After registering and paying the entrance fee at the trail entry point at Station 1, we began our journey to conquer the paved road. A few minutes into our hike, we were greeted by a sign which pointed to the flat rocks, which was only 374 meters away from that sign. Looks easy, so we decided to take that route thinking that it was going to be just a short detour, a side quest. But oh my gosh, that side quest was harder than the main quest. So much for the paved road. We ventured off into the jungle, but at least I got to see the interesting flat rock formation, some insects jumping on the water which I think were water spiders, and I even saw a snake. After visiting the flat rocks, we went back the way we came from and continued on our main quest. Following the main road, we came across some special areas like the mahogany plantation, a permanent biodiversity monitoring area, and some permanent field laboratory areas. I think throughout this hike, we passed through like three PFLAs. Now what do scientists or other people use these areas for? I actually have no idea. But my guess best would be that these areas are used as an observation and research site to gather information about the ecosystem on Mount Makili. So far so good for a hike. It's been pretty peaceful so far except for that flat rock side quest but the distances between each station have been pretty reasonable and consistent so far. But then we reach station 4 and what do you mean 999.2 meters? It's almost double the distance from station 3 to 4. And you also gotta move the sign by 0.8 meters so you'll have a full kilometer. What the heck, bro? Why is the next station so far away? I don't get it, man. Or at least that's how we were feeling when we saw the sign at station 4. But we didn't. Or rather, we couldn't complain much since we're just there to hike anyway. So we just continued. <laughs> In our hike, since we're walking on paved roads, there are different modes of transportation available, such as transportation by foot, by bike, by motorcycle, and by car. However, most of this can only go up to the end of the paved road at station 11. From there onwards, hikers will need to proceed on foot. Now, if you're planning to hike at Mount Makiling, just like us, and are worried that it's just a long road with lots of trees and no refreshments, don't worry, the whole hike is not just roads and trees all the way. Well, most of it is. But on some stations, there are actually some Sari Sari stores where you could buy some foods and drinks from while taking a break. Talk about convenience! After walking for a kilometer minus 80 centimeters, we finally arrive at station 5 where we found a rest area with a buku juice vendor along with this sign of the strong odor macrobiotic uh strongilodon macrobotris oh it's also called a jade vine <laughs> tayabak 
I'm not sure if I've seen this plant before in my life, so it could have been my first time seeing one in person that day. Except that I don't know what to look for and most plants look very similar to me, so I might have seen one during our hike? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, look at this increase in elevation at station 5. We don't actually see how much the elevation changes while walking, but we do feel them. If there's no change in elevation, like if you made me walk for 5 kilometers straight under the shade of trees, then I'd have no problem. But since this is a hike and the elevation increases as you go further on, I was getting tired at this point. I've said previously that there are Sari Sari stores at specific stations. In the seventh station, there are a few of these stores beside each other, so we took the opportunity to take a break. Now, just a few steps away from station seven, you can find the Central Forest Experiment Station which has an open gate but we didn't went inside. Then there's also the Los Baños Experiment Station which has a closed gate so we didn't go inside. And finally, the Makiling Rainforest Park which is labeled as a special kind of place that is used for recreational activities. Moving along, we heard this ear-piercing sound which we were not sure which species of insect this came from. <laughs> Upon reaching Station 8, we also arrive at the road that leads to the mud spring. But we didn't go to the mud spring because we've had enough of a side quest like the one going to the flat cross and the majority of us were just too tired to go on a 692 meter trail and back just to see something that we wouldn't be able to come close to. I know, we're not fit enough that day, but maybe next time. <laughs> now, there's also another place along the way that we didn't go to, and that's the Tayabak campsite. It might have been a wonderful chance to see the jade vine since the campsite was named after it, and I assume that there's some jade vines around it. But when I look at the direction of the campsite and found that there's no shade, especially in this weather, no, it's a no for me, chief. This isn't the time for me to barbecue myself under the sun. But you know what time is it? It's time to remind you guys to drink water. Keep yourself hydrated. Always drink clean water. Drink now. <sighs> now normally, when we reach a station, we would stop and rest for a bit. But when we reach station 9, we didn't. Because it's just too darn hot under direct sunlight. So we immediately went back to the shadow. I meant shade. We went back to the shade. But before doing so, we saw that the next station was about 900 meters away. This is like station 4 all over again. <laughs> Along the way, it's also interesting to see unique types of seeds that I normally don't see in the city. I found some seeds that have wings and can glide and another set of seeds that spin in midair. Just imagine strong gusts of wind picking up these seeds and placing them somewhere far away and over time they will grow into huge trees and the forest will expand and we will live happily and cooler after. Oh my gosh, I miss seeing trees in the city. Now going back on track, nothing much happened in between stations 9 and 10. We were just about at our wit's end and would really like to end this hike by this time. This hike has gone on to be a lot more tiring than expected. Maybe because I just don't go outside much or maybe because I decided to carry a big and heavy backpack with me or maybe because I only have an hour of sleep before hiking. Maybe, but nothing scientific proven so let's just say it's a mystery. Also seeing that we needed to walk another 850 meters to reach the next station, man, that's not motivating. Well, we had no choice, so we walked, or rather, we persevered. The hike was nearing its end and, oh, by the way, remember that jade vine that I wanted to see so bad? I actually managed to finally find some of its flowers along the way, but they were just on the road among the fallen leaves and I looked around but couldn't find where they actually came from, which was 
kind of weird. But you know what's not weird? Reaching our destination. Yes! After looking up upon finding the jade vine flower, our goal is now within sight. I knew that flower was a sign, you know, I'd even call it fate. After four hours of hiking, which actually should have been just one and a half hour, we had finally reached Aguila Base at Station 11. Fun fact, we were told that some Aguila or Eagles actually visit the place sometimes, so maybe that's the reason why it's called Aguila Base. It would be nice to stay there for a while and eat, but it's already lunchtime when we arrive and my companions have some specific cravings. Not to mention that it's also would have been a very hot journey going back down due to the sizzling Philippine summer. That, and since we were already very tired, we decided to just habble habble our way down. And with that, our Mount Makiling hike to Aguila Base is a mission accomplished. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.